What I would do, and actually I do this also in, in, in the clinical setting, I just lean against the sheet and the, and the blanket here, and that traps it so it's not gonna roll with the patient. And then if I were in a clinic setting where there weren't people standing over here, you could just lift the edge of the sheet and have them turn, um, turn towards you. Um, so I'm gonna tent instead and go ahead and turn toward me. There you go, yeah, face it there, there you go. And then scoot down to the table a little bit. There you go. And then you can get rid of that. So the, the um, draping, move the pillow, I'm going to go with under the knees here, I'm going to move the pillow up, so it's under your knees. So the pillow goes from under the ankle to under the knees, and the draping is very similar, where we gather, and then I'm going to lift up under the knee here, and go under, and you, if you pull up, then it just... Uh, the sheet goes basically the way you want to. So it's nice, secure on the inside of the leg here. And we're gonna go up to, you can go up to like the greater trochanter here on the hip area. The front of the leg would be similar to the back of the leg if you wanted to do things in more of a unified whole, you can do that. What I mentioned is if you want to like wash your hands after you've done the feet, when you have the person turn over, you could just uncover the feet and work on the tops of the feet, then wash your hands and then go to the rest of the leg. Some people like to wash their hands after they work on the feet. And I do have my fencer stance again, so I can lean into this and basically stay in one standing position. Okay. So I'm going to start with start with effleurage. I'm going to do some petrissage, and my fingertips are working on the medial side of the calf here. And then on the outer part of the calf, on the tibialis anterior, I'm going to use my thumbs, and it's almost like circular friction, really. But my hands are in more of an open petrissage kind of position. But I'm using my thumbs in calling it petrissage, kind of like a circular friction. I just like to do that so we're concentrating on the muscles more than just doing the petrissage by itself. As I go around the knee, I like to do this little circle that goes around the knee because you have the quads here, you have the quad insertion at the, um, the kneecap here, the patella. So I like to do this little circling around. <clears throat> Use a little bit more oil over here. So and I'm going to do circular fulling or friction basically. Flourish up and fingertips working in more deeply on the muscles on either side of the tibia. And I really like to work tibialis anterior more deeply, which is 
brace his leg up here a little bit because it's wanting to fall out. I like working on tubialis anterior a little more deeply because it gets, you know, it's a muscle that gets used a lot. And I can also brace here at the ankle and use my outer hand. This can be tender, you know, if a person has been uh, jogging a lot or, you know, to run a race or has been using, uh, walking a lot, hiking, whatever. This can be pretty tender in here. And then circular falling over the quads. This gives your thumbs a break, so that's nice. And again, I'm only working about halfway up the medial thigh here. A little farther up. I can even work all the way up to the iliac crest. Uh, again, getting the, um, like, a TFL, tensor fasciolata, and that worked glute medius. my directions here. Um, you can do ringing on the quads. And we're doing the same kind of thing where we're angling as we get up toward the hip here. Now barrage back down. I like to use the heel of my hands to create a little more deep effleurage. And the instructions say to use a V. Well, it's like an inverted V because your fingers are coming together, so they are not pressing down on the tibia. On the tibia. So using the, the sides of your hands or the heels of your hands to create a deeper effleurage. And then you have to lighten up as you come up to the knee. Let me do a few passes. And if you wanted to continue up, you could just go lighter over the knee and continue up. I didn't have knuckling here, but you certainly can do knuckling on the quads. I'm going to stabilize the muscle um, insertion here at the, at the patella by just holding my hand here. And you want to start a little, you don't want to start as deep as you want to go, you want to start a little bit lighter. And then with the subsequent passes, you can go more deeply. And the deeper you go, the slower you go. How's that pressure? That's good. Sometimes if the muscles, especially like quads, can get really uh, tight, and it's easy to slip off of them. So be mindful of, that's why stabilizing the muscle can be helpful. Am I, am I pushing on your patella too much? No, no, no. Okay. And of course, um, the IT band can get very tight. It can also be very tender, so it's good to stretch it. And I can get more leverage here by putting my elbow on my hip and just leaning into it. This is all also the gallbladder meridian. On some people it's real tender. But some people really like their IT band stretch. So I would go a little bit more lightly over the medial thigh again. This is uh, the skin is thinner. Um, if anything, I might just go over the fastest medialis here and then bring it back up to the rectus medialis. So that's a little improv, it's not on your sheet, but um, it's just knuckling over the quads. And then um, I'm going to do. I don't do vibration over the, the uh, anterior 
uh, calf, because we have the, the bone here, there isn't really any muscle to push up and do uh, the vibration. So again, hands pushing the muscle belly up and vibrating between the hands. In this one, you don't have to cover. You can, if you want. You certainly can. Um, and then I'm going to work on the top of the foot. Let's see what I want to do here. His leg is naturally falling outward. So, oops. No, it's fine. It's just, you relax, it's good. Um, use a towel. You can sit, you could also, you could also, if your legs are long enough, you could, you could bolster if you wanted to. Is that okay on your knee? Mm -hmm. That's great. So there's a nice, this is um, not described on your sheet, but there's a nice way, I learned this in an Ayurvedic massage, um, that you can do the top of the foot and the bottom of the foot, and the hand is basically just circling up and down the bottom of the foot, and the top is circling and just go between. And then you can bring your hand up and down the bottom of the foot. And it's kind of stimulating as well as warming and spreading the oil. Circles down the top of the foot. I'm not doing this in the best position. I'm not doing this. circles down the top of the foot. You look like you burned your foot. Oh, I I went on a hike like two weeks ago and kind of messed up my feet. Oh. <laughs> Just taking a warm bath. I think it was a little too warm. Yeah. <laughs> you can trace down between the tendons. And you have a bandit on your big toe, so I'm not going to work on that, but you can do circles off the toes. And I do along the side of the foot, kind of like I do on the bottom of the foot, getting my knuckle and my thumb together along the side here. I can't see. Am I missing something? There's something on there that I haven't done? Cross friction. Ah, okay. So, fingers going across the top of the foot. Okay. Anything else? That good? Did I cover it? Pretty much? Okay. They keep me acupressure and solar ah. plexus Thank you. This is why I have my notes here. So there is, um, in reflexology, of course the foot is like a map of the body, and the ball of the foot is like the diaphragm. So there's this little hollow here, which would be sort of like the solar plexus, and that's the kidney one point. When you're done with both feet, 
and if you place your hand over the top of the foot, the thumb just kind of naturally curves up into into that depression in the at the base of the ball of the foot. And that's kidney one. That's the like a source. I don't know if that's the right word for it, source point, but it's called I think it's called bubbling spring. And um, it's a good point for. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Okay. <laughs> That's like one of the few I remember. And uh, it's supposed to be good for revitaliz revitalizing your energy. But it's also a nice way to connect with the person on the table. And so I would just hold it. I mean, it's, I'm not pressing hard. I'm just holding it. I can hold it for, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute if you want to. Okay. So I'm going to do the abdomen as well. And... Now that I've worked on your feet, I'll just quickly wash my hands. When we did the uh, the drape of the the breast area, we kind of got the patient a little bit more involved because they were not half asleep like in massage. <laughs> so in massage, what you can do if you're working on female, you can hold this back a little bit. They're snoring away, and you can place this here. And I would have it open like this and make sure you're not, you know, you're reaching under over the side here, keeping this in place. And I actually sometimes even just gently place my arm here. So I've got the whole thing. I mean, not pressing down on them too hard here. So this is for abdominal work. Hold this down a little bit. And then you can fold this up. You know, and if a woman has larger breasts, you may need to fold it you know, with a little bit more coverage and then pulled across and then tuck in. And I'm gonna be on your right side. So, do you do this for men as well to keep them warm? Or it will help to keep them warm. And you know, people have different, some guys are shy about uncovering. So you could ask if they wanna be draped or you can just go ahead and do it if you're unsure. Um, and you can, just to start, and I didn't, um, I want to, before I undrape, just place my hands on the abdomen. And if they're kind of in a massage sleep state, they may kind of, you know, wake up a little bit, notice, oh, they're gonna, she's gonna work on my abdomen now. And so it's just kind of a way of saying, I'm gonna work on this part of your body. Not all massage therapists work on the abdomen, but it's really good for the health of the, you know, the colon to get things moving, um, to get things circulating. And, and it can also be very relaxing. So just a gentle hold and then drape to the hips here. This next move is one of those that the hands don't lift off, and so it's kind of feels sort of like this endless motion. Um, so hands are placed on the abdomen, fingers pointing away from me, and I'm going to move my hands in circles, and one hand is just going to drape over the top of the other without really coming off, uh, breaking contact. And you want to go nice and slow. Energetically, the solar plexus is our emotional center. So it's an area that can be susceptible to um, increased stress, tension, energy flows. So you want it to be nice and slow. We're, doing, we're going clockwise, so we're moving in the direction of the large intestine. And then I'm going to do the kind of ringing that we did on the back. Same kind of thing, fingers pointing in the same direction. How much pressure? Very light. Yeah, we're not really using much pressure at all. It's more like, um, it's, more, it's almost like energy working away. But the body does respond to it. And you may hear like some gurgling sounds and things as you're working. And then we're going to do this interesting kind of petrissage. It's not at all like what we did before. It's this, um, it's the wave. So we're uh, bringing our heel of our hand in over the, so 
a semicolon, right, transverse, d semicolon. So we're bringing our hand, the heel of our hands in over the ascending, sort of rocking across the transverse and going down the descending. Um, my hands won't fit side by side between his ribs and his hips, so I'm actually overlapping. If a person is really long in their waist, then you can just put hands side by side. You just don't want to be pressing down on the hip and the or the ribs. So I'm bringing my hands together here and then coming across the transverse colon and then drawing back down the descending. passes of that petrissage and what else can we just scroll down a little bit? That's that. Okay. If you want to do some more circles to end, very slow circles to end. You can do that. And then we're gonna do a rock, a rocking. Um, I'm gonna leave this in place when we come um, when we pick up next week, we're going to pick up at the shoulders. So it's nice to have this in, drape in place, actually, for the shoulders. So I want to find your hip bone. Just bring my hand at the waist. I can feel what the edge of my hand where the hip bone is. This is actually a polarity move, and it's supposed to get energy currents moving up the spine. So that hand on the shoulder is just going to hold, and the hand on the hip is going to rock very gently. And I basically just... Uh, putting the, uh, his hip bone, ASAS, in the heel of my hand. And gen gentle rock. And then I'm gonna walk around. So I can do the other side. So this hand becomes the hold of the shoulder and rock at the hip here. And it's not like a real, um, wide rock like we did with the person laying face down. It's just a very gentle rock. Okay. And that's it. Any questions? Do you do leg, leg, foot, foot? Or do you leg, foot, leg, foot? What, um, what we talked about last week is if you want to wash your hands after you do the feet, mm -hmm. when the person's face down, do leg, leg, foot, foot. Turn them over and do the top of the feet. Foot, foot. Wash your hands and then do leg, leg. Okay.